great about that, other than trying to help people who are in the state of confusion. Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show, starting a little bit early here on the 3rd of April, April 3rd. This is episode 572 of the Immigration Answer Show. I should be here for another hour trying to answer as many of your immigration law-related questions as I can. How is everybody doing? Let us know in the comments who you are, where you're watching from. Welcome to the show. Welcome to this kick-ass community that we've all created together. I'm so very grateful for everyone who watches the show regularly and who comments and who shares good stuff in the comments. Sometimes the comments are the absolute best part of the show. My good friend Huli is here. Donna gives everybody a big up, including to yours truly. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Donna. Um, Rocio is here. Hina is here. Nurse Laura is here. Syra is here. Tyrone in the house. Bernadine H&M. Kofi is here from Atlanta. Robert's here from the West Coast. Kerwin is here from Brooklyn. Carolyn's in Montana today. You never know where Carolyn's going to be. Today she's in Montana. Big up, everyone. I miss everyone, but my, soul, my son told me it was a good show. Yeah, Donna, I even played that clip from the Soul Glow show. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Marla's here, and TM is here from Maryland. All right. My friend Huli's here, and she's going to share... And she has shared how to get into the waiting room. Temi's watching. Temi, good to see you, buddy. Big heart to you. Let's go to We Value Staffing. Hello, We Value Staffing. Hello, Jim. Can you take me off camera, please? Are you driving? I. Um, are you driving? All right. How are you? Good. Yes, but I'm a pull over. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead and pull over, and then we can talk. Okay. No problem. So I'm not sure if you remembered, but a few if you told me not to go with the scumbag, whatever, whatever. I sounds, did went. Like sounds, I, you, your microphone broke up a little bit. Can you say that again? Sorry, can you hear me now? Uh-huh. So I remembered um, a few weeks ago I called you and I told you about my U.S. husband and you told me not to go with the scumbag. But you yeah. couldn't jump on it right away because you had short time. However, yeah. don't yell at me. I went with the scumbag. Oh, I don't yell did at people. Mess, try to, he did try to mess up the interview, sabotage the interview. Well, why I said that is because he told him he can't remember. He said he answered all the other facts finding question correctly. But one question like how your wife's middle name. My middle name spelled B-E-A-N-C-A-H. It still says Bianca. But he couldn't spell my middle name. And another question they asked him, the street, the cross street from our house. He literally couldn't remember the cross street from our house. Mm. So that's two questions, which is fact finding question. You think that was on purpose or on accident? I I um to be honest, if I'm gonna be very honest, I think it was on purpose, but then from after the interview and us having conversations saying, babe, I wouldn't do that. If I didn't want to go, I wasn't going to go. And I really want this out of the way and for you to get to move on with your life, whatever, whatever, and move on to the next level and stuff like that. But he keeps expressing that, emphasizing that he, you know, it wasn't purpose. But then why would you not know to spell your wife middle's name? If, if you had said to the officer, okay, I do not know to spell her name because maybe her Bianca spells different. That I could have accepted, but you don't want to yeah. spell my middle name? Mm, yeah. No, I can't accept that. However, today I just got an update and they approved not my I-130, not my um, I-485, but my mm -hmm. travel document. Any tips on that? So that has nothing to do with the interview itself. So your case is just pending. You can't read okay, anything. Okay, so just that. wait. A yeah. So just wait a little more, or what do you advise us to do? I mean, you just had the interview, right? Yeah, so I think you have to wait a little longer. So because I, from from my personal perspective, I think it was a sabotage. 
based on what I told you, what do you think? Oh, I don't. Can you remember this? I mean, he he showed up, and it seems like he tried. I don't. I don't know that anybody's cl- like. I've thought about this before. What if somebody just really wanted to screw over their spouse, and like they went ahead and filed, and they sort of were winding down, and they didn't really like the person you could do a whole lot worse than just not answering two questions. I don't think someone would be subtle enough to get 80 of them right too long, even though those are two big questions. What, what's your cross street and what's your wife's, how do you spell your wife's middle name? Okay. Got you. All right. Well, let us know how it goes. Okay. All right, Thank you so much for your help as always. And I really hope that something good comes to I hope so too. Oh, one more question for you go, Jim. Yeah. Go oh ahead. boy, I can't hear you. Oh my bad. Yeah, um, we're gonna let we're gonna let her go. That audio just no good. Car car calls usually suck. All right, James is here. Hello, James. Hello. Hi, James. Hello, Jim. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, James. Today I'm happy to I mean to talk to you, calling from Amsterdam. Hello from yeah. Amsterdam. Yes, please. Oh, uh, you know, uh, I think I uh, emailed you some, I think almost two, two months ago, uh, that um, my son has filed uh, I is it I one thirty for me. Okay. And uh, I'm married in Holland here legally, but he made a mistake and he did it single. So they were about to, or uh, it got to a time that they was about to take a decision. And now they said uh, because of that, uh, it will keep longer than expected. So we are waiting. Last month they sent another message that we have three months. And just uh, last uh, two weeks ago, my son sent me again that they say we have two months. But the mistake that we made, they didn't rectify it. You understand me? So now I don't know how things are going. To and I want to call if maybe you can give me some knowledge about it for me to know what to do at the moment. Are you talking about the I-130 itself with yes, USCIS? Please. Yes, please. You should send them a letter with a corrected answer for that question. You should notify them exactly the situation. If you're married, they should include the uh, copy of your marriage certificate and make it clear that you are that you are in fact married. Yeah, I would do that tomorrow. Yeah, but we, I mean, my, I did it even since January, but still now I haven't seen any correction yet. You haven't sent the correction yet? What are you waiting for? No, I mean, we, we did it uh, uh, in January. We sent the marriage certificate, all the necessary documents. But well, what's the What was the date that the I-130 was originally filed? It was uh, 4th June, yeah, 2023. We- yeah, they're taking a year, bro. So you're good. You're just chilling. It's not because of that. It's just it's just you're you're in line ahead of with everybody else. Okay. Okay. So I should just keep waiting. Just keep waiting. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm happy to, to, to talk to you today. Good seeing you, buddy. H- H- happy Ramadan. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> bye bye. All right, all right. Uh, Lewis says today was a good win for Arsenal. There's no such thing as a good win for Arsenal. Um and sorry, Donna, but you can tell Ryan that Manchester United thumbs down. All right. All right. All right. Let's go to James. Hello, James. Hi. Please, can I have you off camera? Okay. You got it. Oh, sorry. There you are. Off camera. Okay. Good evening. Um, Hello. Yes. Um, I have only a quick question. Um, yesterday, I went for the interview, and it goes on well. So my visa got approved. So, um, but my, my visa on it is CR1, but my marriage is already two years after two, it's, it's already two years. So I don't know why it couldn't change to IR1 or something like that. Well, when you get your green card, it should be a one, a two year, it should be a 10 year green card if your marriage is more than two years old. Okay. But uh, now the visa that they issued me is on, uh, the visa is uh, CR1. Oh, I see. So you're overseas. Okay. Yeah. Just come and deal with it later. You'll get, you should, if your marriage is more than two years old, then when you come and you get your green card, it should be a 10 year green card. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, James. See you, buddy. 
All right, let's go to Raman Singh Jindal. Hello, Raman. Hello, Jim. How are you? Great, buddy. How are you doing? Are you driving? Uh, yes, sir. I'm. I'm just pulling up. Give me a second. Okay. We need to have like a little theme song for when people are pulling over. So I don't know what it would be, but um, maybe I can't <laughs> drive. I can't drive yes. 55 or something. How How right, are you, Jim? Jim. Good, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Um. So I am uh, from India, but I, I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, that, sounds I, like a, that sounds like a good song. And I'm from India <laughs> in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. So um, here's the thing, actually. So I got uh, denied. Um, I, I've, I got married in 2020 um, um, in, in uh, August. And then uh, we filed for I-130 in November. We got an interview in 2023. And then in... Um, I think it was, uh, yeah, we got, um, sorry. So end of the day, the, the first case was declined, uh, because I, I did a misrepresentation on my, on my case actually. So when I flew from India, my agent told me that because I was single, so he told me to, to lie and then put a, you know, to show on DS-160 form that, uh, you know, that I'm married. But there yeah. was uh, there was no spouse. It was just to get a visa. And then um, when I filed here on my initial case, um, so I did not, you know, I forgot to um, fix that. And then I, I went ahead and then um, got married here and then, you know, filed the case. And then uh, they found out that, you know, I was married in India. And then the end of the day, we, we provide them proof. And then still they, they declined my case. What proof did so, you provide? Um, so my lawyer wanted me to, um, so we, we send them apology, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that I, that I'm, um, uh, misrepresented on my case. And, uh, I did receive a lot of proof from India that I was single uh, the whole time. Like I, I was never married in India, but, but my, my lawyers didn't allow me to provide that proof to the, uh, when, when they send us a noise. Well, so here's another question. You know, you're stacking your problems on top of each other. So when you filed the 485, there's a question. Have you ever have you ever uh, provided any documentation to any U.S. government official that was false, fraudulent or misleading? And you probably put no on that, right? No. You put no. My, my, my lawyers. Yes. Yeah, that, that's correct. Yes. So. You know, an apology. I don't know who told you to send an apology. Apologies are basically an admission. That's that's not much more than an admission. So um, that's correct. So did they did they approve the I one thirty? No, they, they didn't. And they denied the forty five for misrepresentations. Yes. Okay. So what's your question for me? So we I went ahead and filed a new case. Um, on uh, March twenty March twenty uh, seventh, uh, twenty twenty three, so it's been a year now. Okay, and on that on that forty five, where it says, "Have you ever given any documentation to any U.S. government official that was false, fraudulent, or misleading?" Did you put yes or did you put no? Uh, yes, we did. Yes. Okay, and did you file a new forty five or a new I one thirty or both? Uh, new, just just the new I one thirty. Okay, so what's your question for me? Um, just want to see um, if, if I can. So once they reach out to me again, and then I do have the proof from India, but end of the day, that, that shows me that, that I was the one who, you know, first lied and then providing the proof that I was never married. Like, how, how, how's your, your perspective on this, this case? As per, as per you, what, what can be, is there any chances on this case? I think the chances are very, very low. Okay. Um, I think you probably haven't handled it all that well. Um, I would have handled things a little bit differently. Um, but that I-130 should be approved and you should be able to apply for a waiver. They might not give you the waiver, but, you know, in their mind, they just, they, they, so how did it, how did it come out? Did it come out at your interview or did they just send you annoyed after, or did they, did anyone ever get in your face and say, Hey, dude, you lied on your DS-160? Uh, yeah, that was in the interview. So tell me what happened at the interview. Did you lie initially at the interview? No, not in the interview. When when they asked me whether I was married and I said yes, uh, my agent told me to do this. I, I, I told them everything. Okay. So that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, 
Well, and it's been four years that I'm married. Uh, you know, I'm married to to my wife. Um, it's been four years now. Yeah, that doesn't matter. I mean, that's just okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So when they denied when they denied the forty five, was it for the lying, or was it because you didn't provide them proof of marriage back in India? Um. No, actually, I, I'm not sure. I think the my lawyers were kind of trying to get this case, you know, uh, like trying to get me to sign up with a newer case with them. I believe that that's why they, I, I probably, I'm, I'm thinking that they, they, they stopped me to provide, uh, send them the proofs from the one from my, I got from India. Well, if you want me to send, if you want to send me everything and look it over, I think it's a, it's a tough sure. case. I think it's a tough yes. case. I'd, I'd be. Ha I think eventually you're going to be headed towards a waiver, and you can. You and your wife can start working on the waiver case now because you're going to need it. Okay. Okay. And I. I, mm -hmm. I do see your your email address here. Info yeah. at uh, hacking immigration. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll send whatever I have on on the previous case. Uh. Um. To you. Thank you, Raman. Uh, thank you. Bye, buddy. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Cesar is back. Hello, Cesar. Hey, Jim. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. I, I just had a couple of questions for you. So uh, a couple of days ago, I received a an approval notice for my 485. Nice. After uh, 14 months. Mm. Um, so I wanted to ask you just a, a few questions. The, the first thing is, I wanted to know what happens to my work authorization through deferred action do i uh do i still need to renew that do i need to uh nope. let them know that i don't need it anymore what's what what happens with that i would just hold on to it when you go for your citizenship interview you'll give them that card they'll want to take it and destroy it but you're fine so no no action on my part mm -mm. is it still valid or does it get invalidated with a uh, green card why do you care because last time I spoke with you, um, you were telling me that it was not the best thing to leave things at USCIS. Oh, uh, I do. I do say that a lot. But some, but yeah. uh, Cesar, as dumb as they are, I think we, we it's fair that it's fair for us to assume that they know that when they give you a green card that you don't need your work card anymore. I, I understand. I understand the concern, but you're fine. They, that that is one thing that they should know. And, and there's not a, there's not really a way that I can come back and bite you. So you're fine. OK. The second question I have is, um, do I need to update my social security card to remove the the DHS restriction? You can if you want to. Do Does it make a difference? Is there um, something that uh, changes? Well, so if you change jobs and you file a new I-9, the, the, you'll bring your passport, your green card, and your social security card. The Social Security says only valid with DHS work authorization. That green card is the valid, is the DHS work authorization. So if you if you're the kind of person who likes to keep things clean, which sounds like maybe you are, like let me put it to you this way: my wife would go down and get a new Social Security card. I would not. <laughs> you, you can call that laziness. You can call that chill. But at the end of the day, you have the ability to work in the United States forever, and you know obviously you can apply for citizenship later, but. If you want to go do that, if that's going to make you feel better, you certainly can go down there and, and wait and ask them for a new one. Okay. Um, another question real quick, Jim. So how soon could uh, international travel happen? So let's talk about that. So um, were you in status at the time that you applied or out of status? In, in status. Okay. And if you travel, are you going to go back home? Are you going to bring your spouse? I, I'm not sure yet. I was just, we were talking about it and, and we haven't made any decisions, but. Uh, the only reason I bring it up is because we've heard a few stories, both on this show and in news reports of people who are in the United States for a long time without authorization. As soon as they get their green card, they leave town without their spouse, go back home and party for a month. And when they come back, everybody figures out that it wasn't a real marriage anyway. And the person doesn't get let back in and loses their green card. So. My vote is to do it with 
my vote is to travel with your spouse the first time or else take a short trip and, and be able to establish where they are, that they know you're gone and all that stuff. Okay, that makes sense. One last question, Jim, if it's okay with you. Um, of course. I, I was interested in getting or, or actually doing a FOIA to see everything that happened with my file. I love that something? idea. I, I would do that all the time. I would do that all the time. And now's a good time to do it. You don't want to do it when you apply for citizenship because that's going to um, slow down your citizenship case. But do it now because mm -hmm. you got time to wait. So would you have some advice as far as the timing? Should I do it right now? Should I wait a couple yeah. weeks, a month? I mean, do you have the green card in your hand? Not yet. So after that. After that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, thank you, Jim. Like I said, it was uh, it was 14 months from from start to end, and I appreciate all your help. I'm happy for you, Cesar. Stay in touch, buddy. Will do. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, the people have spoken. Lewis, whose guidance I trust, he's with Amani. He says, Cesar, go fix that Social Security card. And Alejandra says, I got a new one. It's better. So, um, but Phoenix is on my side. Um, I did my driver's license, not the Social Security card, but. I think I think if you want to be overly uh, safe, that's a good call. All right, AJ's here, and is at Joshua National Park. AJ, my son Ismail was just at Joshua National Park. He sent us some cool photos. So hope you're having fun. Hope it's pretty. Look who's here, the one and only Brent D. Sheely. Hello, Brent. Uh, and everyone's giving Donna. Donna's giving the love. Um, <laughs> Donna gave us the big up on Soul Flow show yesterday, so that that made my day. Oh, okay. Guess who's here? Matt and Priscilla are here. Hello, friends. You're on mute. Hello, Jim. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good. I'll turn off the truck. That'll be better, huh? It's all good. How you doing? Good. We just um we just ate lunch at Lambert's up here in Sykeston. Oh, the home of the throat rolls. Yeah, and she and she got two. She caught two. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you guys who don't know, they this place when you come, you order your food, but also they have these um, paper towel racks, and you put down paper towels, and they come around with like free samples of like au gratin potatoes, fried okra, stuff like that. And then also there's a guy who has a tray full of real hot buns, and they'll throw them all the way across the restaurant at you, and you got to catch them. <laughs> we got a video of her catching two of them, and I was going to send it. So oh yeah, that's fun. That's fun. If you get attachment, you know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Um, we talk as as far as our case right now, we're doing really good. Um, we're moving along. We just have we're just waiting for a uh, long form birth certificate birth certificate to come from South Africa. Yeah, which we used a, a process through a company that supposed to you know you pay more and you'll get it quicker. So hopefully yeah. within uh, about six more weeks we'll have it at the most. That's good. That'll be good to have forever. Yeah, but uh, everything was moving along really fast until they asked for that, you know? Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, our attorney, Andrew, if, if he wasn't uh, in law, he could be a psychologist. He's so calm. You, you, you know what it's like to talk to him, don't you? Well, Andrew and I are the chill ones in the, in the office. Imani, Imani, thinks, Imani thinks Andrew and I are a little too chill, but yeah. He's oh, he's guy. so cool. You guys are both so cool. I know he's got to be a good friend of yours because he's just yeah, he's a good cool, guy. And cool my, guy. Buddy Brent, my buddy Brent's asking me, didn't we go there to the throat rolls and the wait was too long and we went to Sugar Fire for barbecue? That's exactly right, Brent. That's what we yeah. did. So we love Sugar Fire. Are you coming up this way to St. Louis or where are you headed? No, we come through there once in a while. So if we ever need to drop something off or uh, or or bring you some good Detroit pizza or something, if we're oh. up at, go up to Michigan, <laughs> we we come through there sometimes. Um, usually our route is down here, though, going across 60, uh, going through Sykeston and all that, Poplar Bluff. Got it. But everything's going really good. And, you know, of course, we're nervous. And, of course, we have to keep giving stuff to our higher power, God. You know, we have to keep keep it, keep it praying and keep believing. And uh, now You guys are in good shape. You guys are going to be yeah. fine. But yeah, I, we haven't gotten on. I, you know, I, we enjoy watching the show. It's uh, easier. I always talk too much when I get on here, don't I? I <laughs> know. It's all good. I'll, I'll see you guys later. All right. <laughs> all right. Guys, thanks for saying hi. Everyone loves to see you. All right. All right. Uh, Yusuf's back. What up, Yusuf? Oh, hi. That was fast. <laughs> hey, man, how's it going, Joe? Oh, you got your Premier League on in the background. What's up? Oh, yeah. I'm watching the game, Man City. Oh, 
so um i i literally just up uh, like sent my documents on march 21st and i yesterday i got my biometrics appointment scheduled and today i just got the notification literally right now request for initial evidence mm. already so i'm not even sure what what is what that kind of case uh aos adjustment of status marriage um yeah how much marriage evidence did you submit i i worked with your team oh yeah and did they do medical i did medical yes mm. and they sent it with it so i'm really like concerned you know hmm. yeah uh birth certificate everything translated with the spanish group hmm. uh who's your lawyer uh, uh the supervisor is andrew my main lawyer is casey okay i'll check with them okay okay perfect thank you yeah because i literally just submitted the case that was really interesting yeah that's crazy well it's probably i know it doesn't seem like it was probably a good thing let me check and i'll get back to you okay 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 thank you jim thank you so much right, buddy. i'll see you thank you see you all right all right uh juan is here juan, are you, <laughs> hey jim driving? how are you i'm good buddy you're not driving are you no, no, no. I'm uh, I'm in my car. Uh, private conversation. Well, uh, far away from the office. So, okay. Uh, I just What's wanted what? to ask you a quick question. Um, so I actually just applied for my citizenship, uh, given that my wife is a U.S. citizen, um, and I literally just applied like 20 days ago, and now I got my inter my request for not my request. I I got scheduled for an interview, and so one of my questions to you was, since I applied under the three year rule, should my wife come with me to the citizenship? Should she actually to sorry to the interview? Should she go inside with me? Should she wait outside? I don't know. Just looking for some guidance. So what I tell my clients is the spouses in 95% of the cases are just window dressing. So I think the officers okay. do like to see them sitting out there and supporting you when you go. But okay. most, officer, most officers won't go through bringing them in and asking them questions. Has your 751 been approved or do you have a 751? Uh, it, it's actually the card has been mailed to your office. And I'm, uh, as soon as it arrives, hopefully this week, I'll go, I'll drive there, which is like five minutes away and I'll go pick it up. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I would, I would bring your, I would bring your spouse and I would bring some, a little bit of updated marriage stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that was going to be my, my next question, I guess. Um, in addition to the doc, so they on the notice it does say to bring some documents like my wife's birth certificate uh, and some other things that I need to bring. Uh, in addition to that, I was planning on bringing some basic documents like I don't know, copy of my tax filings um, and some information about the trips that we've taken over the past couple of years. Um, I don't know if you had any other feedback about anything else that you I mean, thought I could they, submit. If they, if they just dropped the 751 approval, you probably don't need much. I would just do whatever your okay. lawyer says. I would just do that, but I think you're going to be fine. Okay. Okay. And then one final question. So I use um, a lawyer through my company um, and they file the application, but they do not come with you to the interview. So I wanted to ask you, um, how much do you charge for coming to the interview with me? It's in about four weeks. So, uh, in St. Louis. Yeah, here, here in St. Louis. Yeah. Um, and so, you, some other lawyer filed the N four hundred. Yeah, let me give you. Uh, so my my company uses some lawyers for all their applications, and yeah. I use them for that because they give us like a reduced price. Or so here's uh, what I'll say: email so me, really the, email me the name of the lawyer, and then I'll tell you how much I'll charge. No, I don't, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it on the show, but email me and then I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Should I email you through the Jim Hacking uh, yeah. uh, email? Okay, right on. That's my. Okay, secret those are all email. my questions. Don't tell, don't tell everyone my secret email. But yeah, you can. <laughs> you get the emails from me, so you know my. You know my email. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Uh, Thanks, okay. Man. That's it. So uh, shout out to Laleska for her great work there in the right, case. So. Gonna, boy, everyone's getting shout outs today. Andrew, Tim, Laleska. All right, great. Laleska, awesome. yeah. She answers all my questions. So shout out to her. She's a total rock star. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Juan. See ya. All right, all right. All right, all right. Um, Maggie's watching from New Jersey, but in Ghana on vacation. How about that? Uh, yeah, everyone wants to see Matt on the road. And I think it'd be fun if Matt dropped, brought the big rig by the office. Matt, just so you know, uh, across the street is a car. There's like three car dealers up and down the street on both sides. So if you pulled up and let us know you were coming, we could take a picture with with you and the big rig if I'm here. And then uh, everyone would get a big kick out of that, I think. All right. Need my advice. Hey, Hello. Jim. How you doing? Can you take me off camera, please? You are off camera. 
So um, this is a complicated case. I called you last year about Mary and Mike. So oh, I don't I don't remember Mary and Mike, but go ahead. I know, but it was, about, it was a about, complicated case. Yeah, remind so, me about our friends, Mary and Mike. My friend Mary, she knew her husband Mike for about five years through a mutual friend. And then in August of 2022, they ended up she ended up um running into him in a store and you know they exchanged phone numbers because they hadn't seen one another in a long time um mary was going through a divorce her and mike starts um messaging back and forth um and then later on in the year um they was they was having like a long distance relationship later on in the year um her property manager goes up on the rent and then mike is telling her to move out of state to where he is and come and stay with him her and her kids so she moves in with him um he asks uh, while, her while, to, and she, while she's still married yes going through a divorce yeah, yeah. so her divorce was pending it hadn't been um, finalized yet. So Mary came to the United States and she was out of status. So I need to tell you that part too. So mm -hmm. Mike asked Mary to marry him. They get they get married because her divorce gets um, finalized in February of 2023. Had she applied for any immigration benefit from that spouse? No, that spouse lives back in Mary's home country. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, did like I said, Mary and did get, Mary sorry, and a, sorry, did she did Mary get divorced back in the home country or from the United States? The United States. Okay. So great. her spouse back in the home country didn't want to give her a divorce, but after she moved to the states, um, I guess he realized like the relationship was done, so he agreed to the divorce, signed the paperwork. So this divorce was actually pending from I want to say like October. Um, 2022 was when they started the initial stuff, but you know, when kids involved, you got to do parenting plan and all of that stuff. So it wasn't finalized until February of 2023, but Mary marries Mike right after her divorce is finalized. Okay. Now, like I said, she had known him for five years through a mutual friend, but she didn't know everything about him. So they get married at a courthouse in February, and then May, they file the paperwork. After yeah. they file the paperwork, Mary gets a, a, a notice for Mike to come and do fingerprints. The oh, US that's, not, that's not good. That's yes, good, and you told me this when I called you. Yes. Yeah. So then Mike comes out and tells her that he has this case. Um, I guess he has a he has a felony um, against the he, against the minor. No, it wasn't a minor. It's actually an adult, but he was in the military. So I don't know if that was the reason why they requested it, but he was in the military. So it was against someone that was in his, I guess, platoon. I don't know what they call it. Okay. Yeah. But she was in a minor. This person was actually older than him. Okay. So um fast forward past all of that. Mike now has turned mentally abusive. He has a tracker on Mary's car. Um, and then she just recently found out that he has been diagnosed, I guess, as a non -communi communicative autistic male i guess okay. so there's so many things that is now coming out of the woodworks that she didn't know about initially before they got married and like i said she's now had to go into therapy because you know this whole immigration journey is just a lot and then now unraveling all these things and feeling like she's just stuck and then him just doing all of these things like he's showing up on her job and telling her to leave work and, and all these stuff. So it's like, it's a lot on her. And she was thinking about going the VAWA route, but she wanted your advice. Well, 
I mean, that's not the kind of advice I could give out on a show like this to try to convert a case from an I-130 to a VAWA. And, and, you know, we would have to talk about things like what actual violence is there, what's provable. And the problem is this person has a long history inside the United States and a long history with this mic. I don't think you, I think USCS is going to think that this, that Mary is desperate to just stay here and that's the driving factor. So I think that, mm -hmm. I, I think there's also a legal question and, and, Whenever USCIS asks for someone to be fingerprinted, the U.S. citizen, that means they think there's an Adam Walsh violation. And if there's an Adam Walsh violation, then that person, the Mike character, is ineligible or is not able to sponsor them for a green card. I don't mm -hmm. believe, <clears throat> I don't believe, but I'm not sure if you can file a VAWA if the petitioner themselves was never eligible to sponsor you for uh, a green card because of Adam Walsh. So there's so, lots of there's lots of problems. Has there been a request for evidence? The case is still pending. What's going on with the case? Um. Well, she's gotten her work card, um, and yeah. they the, they requested the medical. Hmm. So I mean, other than that, like there was a there's tons of evidence like you know the the both of their families came for the wedding like they had an actual wedding after the courthouse well, are they still um, living together yes is she um, safe she's safe well he started doing therapy as well because she said that she wanted to leave because of the behavior he was displaying and she did leave and was staying with a family friend at one point. The, the person is actually a friend of Mike's that she was staying in, and they told her to stay with them for her safety. So it's like her therapist has also told her, like, if I need to give you an affidavit to give to USCIS, I would. And then the, the friends of Mike that she stayed with when she left when there was an incident, where she didn't feel safe, you know, they have also offered to do an affidavit if she needs it because it's like now well, Mike's behavior is starting to become a little shaky. Okay. I mean, apart from the lies, you know. Where's the where's the lies? Um about his situation like he he never told her about his criminal past you know so the like, way the way she found out he had a criminal past was from the, the was when they sent the when they sent for him to do the biometrics and then he told her about it afterwards because so um so she mary's just relying on mike's word as to what the conviction was for that it was military related she doesn't know for sure she hasn't seen the conviction records or anything like that no just there was there was something um that I guess she searched online. She said that she saw um, yeah, just general that's... general stuff about it, but they had the, I guess they had the, what do you call it? Well, he was the defendant, so they had the complaint. Yeah, but, but there might be there might be all kinds of stuff. Out there. She doesn't know she doesn't know that that's the thing that USCIS is hung up on. It could be something that's sealed. She has no idea. She's she's operating on complete blind faith, and this case might be dead on dead, dead on arrival because he. So if if not that I would take on Mike's case, but if I if mm -hmm. if if I were looking out for Mary, I would say we need to do a fingerprint of our own for Mike and figure out everything that he has because. Mm -hmm. Stuff in the military when everybody's an adult probably wouldn't in involve Adam Walsh. So I believe there's probably something else that he still hasn't told her about. Okay. So number one, safety. Number two, I think this case is in big trouble. Number three, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if she can do a VAWA because I think he's not an eligible um, petitioner in the first place. It sounds like, but this is all just hypothetical. I'm not the lawyers. I don't have the documents. I'm just talking generally about. The, the things that I'm thinking about based on what you've said. Okay, so so what does Mary do? I mean, can she contact you? I mean, apart yeah. from the show? Yeah. I mean, it's does she get a divorce? I mean, I think I she she's already did the intake information online, but I just wanted to join the show and ask you 
about it. Well, I'll say this. My gut says this is a very, very hard case. And I think the chances of Mary getting a green card are going to be maybe 20%. And I think the legal mm -hmm. fees would be somewhere between ten and $15,000. Okay. It's, it's a huge thing. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, bye bye. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, I wrote someone in an email the other day that's that when the government asked the U.S. citizen or the petitioner to be fingerprinted, that's a really bad sign. And that usually they don't get it wrong. Every now and then they get it wrong. But usually when they send that fingerprint notice, they already have the goods and they already know how how that happens. I actually don't know because um, they must run some kind of a general background check on the U.S. citizen. But um, that's just, it's just something that I don't, I don't know exactly the mechanics of that. That'd probably be a good thing for us to FOIA to figure out how they do that. That'd be a nice thing to know procedurally how they do that. But um, in any event, everyone was talking about parking trucks outside and it reminded me of one of my old stories. I'll just tell you a real quick story. When I was a new immigration lawyer and back then when Adela started, Adela's from Bosnia and a lot of our clients were from Bosnia and, that, and a lot of them were truck drivers in America. And there was a guy who had applied for citizenship and this was, this would be, you know, 2008, 2008. And so, um, you know, like 10 years after Oklahoma City and, you know, our, that was a federal building. I would imagine USCIS in Oklahoma City was located in that building. And so this Bosnian truck driver, he didn't speak English very well. And he, he, this is before we represented them. He applied for citizenship and the, and the officer, I think he'd been denied. I think he had failed the test once. And so you always get a second chance. And so he got exacer, exas, exacerbated at his, um, he got frustrated and angry at his interview and he sort of lost his temper. And he said something along the lines of, if, if you don't approve my citizenship case, I might as well, what he wanted to say is I might as well stop driving or I might as well stop driving my truck. He said something about parking his truck out in front of the of the building. And again, I wasn't this guy's lawyer at the time, but um, the officer stopped the interview and cleared out the building. She called security. She emptied out the entire building left, even though there was no. Thank you, Chuma. Even though there, I'm exacerbated. Yeah, exasperated. Thank you. I'm fasting. So exasperated, not exacerbated. Um, anyway, so uh, there was no truck out front, but she cleared. This was this was an officer who was very tough. She cleared it all out and denied his citizenship. Ha! So I took that on an N three thirty six. That was the first N three thirty six I ever did, which is an appeal of a naturalization denial. And I said that that was all full of shit and that they shouldn't have denied him for that. And so in the meantime, he's studying really hard. He passes his test, and I got him his citizenship. But he scared the crap out of everybody with. So we should all probably be careful saying things like parking my truck out front, especially if you're at USCIS. All right. All right. Uh, Ray Ray is here. Hello, Ray Ray. Are you there? You're on mute. Hi, Jim. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um, happy Ramadan. Thanks. Um, you're welcome. So I just have a couple questions. Um, so we are getting ready to start the process of the marriage based green card. And I just wanted to know a couple questions. So one, I know if I add my spouse to my bank account, they do ask the question, are you a US citizen? So my first question is, how do we get around that? Um, so we have a joint bank account together. Um, well, my quick answer to that is go to a different bank, go to a credit union or something. Credit unions are really I easy. I actually work for a credit union and we all ask the same question. It's a part of the Patriot Act. Mm. Um, so, well, usually, I mean, then you, I, I don't think you have to be a citizen to open a bank account. You don't. So I would say no to that. And then you might need to wait until he gets a social security number. Usually that's, I mean, you're the, you're the person that works at the credit union, not me. Usually that's the hurdle is not having the social security number. I know they usually ask for an I-9, so that I was just trying to figure out, like, is there a way around that? Yeah, okay. I mean, international students get bank accounts, so I know that you don't have to be a citizen and green card holders for sure. Yeah, it's just that they ask for the I-9 paperwork, and so, okay. 
Um, my other question is, so I own my home. Do I need to add my spouse to the deed of my home? So I would say if you have lots and lots of other evidence, you don't need it. That's It's just one little piece of evidence. It's not something you have to do. I, I think most officers don't get too hung up on that as long as you have other evidence. Okay. And then my last question is, um, my spouse has been working. Um, he came to, he's out of status now, but yeah. he did come to the U.S. and um, he was working at the time. So he's been at the company for a long time. Yeah. Um, so does he need to terminate his employment um, during this process or is that, how, how does that work? I'm just trying to figure out. You know. Let's say that you have an interview on Tuesday mm -hmm. and the officer says, Hey, where are you working to your spouse? And he says, I'm working at XYZ company. When was the last day you worked at XYZ company? Oh, uh, yesterday I was still there. I'm, I'm work, I have, I'll be at work tomorrow. That, that's all forgiven. They don't care. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Um, I guess also one last question. Um, when I'm filling out all the paperwork, I did see that it does ask um, for there to be no blanks on the I-130. So mm -hmm. if that question doesn't pertain to us or our situation, do I just put like NA or none mm -hmm. or? Yeah, I'm, I'm giggling because there was this little two month period when Trump first came into office that if you, if you, had any case, any spot blank on your application, they sent it back. But no, if just put NA. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. And then, I'm sorry, I do have one more question. Um, so when we file the paperwork, so should we send in the I-130, the 485, the 765, and the I-693, and I-894, I mean 864 altogether? Should that all be sent in at once? Yeah. Are you going to do advanced parole or no? Um, advanced parole, that's where he can travel to his home country if needed, right? He could travel outside the United States, but we don't want him traveling until he gets his green card. And now it's $700. So I'm changing my tune. And I would say, unless he thinks grandmama is going to get sick sometime soon, I would save the money and not leave until I actually get my green card. And that form is, which one it's is like that? 131. You, the did, 131. You, you didn't mention okay. it on your list. That's why I, I do it. have it written on my list, but green. I knew that wasn't one that needed yeah. to. Okay. 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 I think that's it. Any other advice you might have for us? Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, too much drama in the house. Too much drama in my marriage. Oh, here we go. Let's hear it. Them. I'm back again. How you doing? I'm doing all right. What's up? The marriage is over. Marriage is over? Yeah. Where, didn't you have your green card interview? No, yeah. I, I, I had a green card interview. Didn't go well. They came to. They came to my door. My wife didn't open the door. They left. And now I'm getting divorced. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So and too much talk. Too much drama. My wife kicked me out of the house. She changed the lock. What are you gonna do? I've been living in that place for five five years. When she married, she moved with me. Now she kicked me out of the house. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so I went to the court. Uh, I find there was any order I granted. So um, they tried to serve her the, 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 the paperwork, but she never opened the door to receive the paperwork. So what are you going to do? I, that's what I'm asking you. What should I do? Should I not the U.S. that marriage is over, or what should I do? Well, I mean, that case, is she, she's probably going to withdraw the I-130, right? Yeah, I want I want her to do that. I don't want nothing related to her. Hey, nothing. I don't want nothing from her. But then what? But then what are you gonna do? That's the question. I don't know. Maybe go back to my country, or I won't, I can't go back to my country because of my salary. I'm gonna go back maybe to Canada or somewhere else in the world to be have a peace of mind, have a well, well mental health. I'm 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 speaking with myself, walking around with like a crazy man just because of. That was too much for me, and now did I'm trying to do what. But did you say you have an asylum case? Yeah, I have a pending asylum case, and my my country is uh, TPS uh, status as well, so I can apply for TPS. Yeah, so don't leave. Yeah. Don't leave and trying to get her to withdraw the I-130, and then see what happens. 
She don't answer my calls. She don't answer my texts. Well, you need a lawyer. You, not a not an immigration lawyer. You need a divorce lawyer. So, should I should I uh, send something to immigration to not to not that uh, the marriage? Well, over? you can withdraw. You can withdraw the four eighty five. Only she can withdraw the I one thirty. You can't withdraw the I one thirty. So I can make the request to withdraw the four eighty five, right? Yeah, but really, you just want her to withdraw the I one thirty. But yeah, you want both. You want to withdraw both. Okay, I, that's what I didn't probably do because I don't have no. I was I was thinking about applying for for the TPS because my country have a TPS. You should. Yeah. So All right. Good luck. Is, good luck, my friend. Is, so we're gonna be a. Uh, my future with the immigration base of that marriage because my marriage is on the investigation. Yeah, well, your case your case is the kind that we hear about from time to time where later on you have a new marriage and they believe that marriage, but then they still want to beat you up for the old marriage. So keep all of your evidence that that marriage was real. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Bye, buddy. All right. All right, all right. AJ, what do you say? Uh, salam alaikum, Jim. Welcome, salam, buddy. How you doing? Are you at the Gamma? Can you can you take me off the, from the camera? You're off camera. All right, thanks for that, Jim. Um, I spoke to you, Jim, like I think a weeks ago, one weeks ago, yeah. And I have a couple of questions that I forget to ask last time. So my question is, if I get a work permit abroad while my case is in the AP, DS5535, does it any influence on my case badly? Wait, what did you say? If I get work permit abroad while I'm waiting. Work permit from some other country, you mean? Yeah, abroad, like some, some other countries while I'm waiting in this process, like DS5535. It's been a year. I like No, I don't I, think anyone will, I don't think anyone will hold that against you, no, and I don't think they'd even ever know. Oh, uh, okay. But so do I need to notify them then if I like get a work permit, like my address and my phone number, no need to notify them. Is it going to change? Is your address going to change? Uh, it's uh, well, if I want, I can change it. But if I don't want, it's uh, it doesn't, I, I think it's not going to be a deal. If Well, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is if you, if you change addresses, notify the embassy. If you don't change addresses, you don't have to notify the embassy. Yeah, I don't want to change it. I don't want to change the address. Yeah, I wouldn't. I still want to, but I still have the same emails and same address in my home country, okay. so that, that would be fine. Yeah, nobody cares. It's fine. Okay. So my second question is, Jim, can we file another mandamus while well, one in the progress already? And if yes, how does it work? You'd have to dismiss the old one and file a new one. I'll dismiss the old one. So mm -hmm. how long should we more wait for this? It's been, I think, it's been a year since I had interview and we filed Mandamus back in, um, I, I think, August, yeah, 2023, August. So since then, we are waiting. And what embassy? Think now, Islamabad. And did our office file that lawsuit? No, um, another lawyer, Curtis yeah. Morrison. Oh, well, Curtis knows what he's doing. Yeah, I... I I don't know what to say. I mean, you you could. Which um, jurisdiction did you file it in? Uh, sorry, I don't understand to that. Oh, sorry. Which court? Which court has your case? Do you know? Um, yeah, it's uh, Wisconsin uh, District Court. And um, are you in a group with other people or just by yourself? No, individual, individual, Jim. Yeah, I think you just got to sit and wait. I don't think another lawsuit's going to do much good. Not with so, those on. So just waiting for the court's decision. Yep. And it's been like three months. And what do you think? Like, you know, how long? More yeah, someone asked me that. No, a lawyer asked me that today. I said anywhere from two to eight months. So I think you're okay. Two to eight months. Yeah. Okay. So um, what else question? Okay, Jim, does it worry if you make mistake at the interview about staying abroad? Like, for example... I leave somewhere for seven years and I forget and I tell the officer two years. So how, does it impact our I mean, community? Big... But, but can you, can I a little bit add more? 
but I provide my whole data in this DS553 farm, uh, farm, like all the countries I stay, no, no, like overstay and like all. Well, over I would say I would say it's probably not a deal breaker, but it's not great. You know, I mean, the difference between two years and seven years is a lot. The difference between seven years and six years, which is what I thought you were going to say, that's not a lot. Yeah, but I taught Jim the uh, the officer asking me recently. I stay uh, in the country. I stay in I Malaysia. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, but I didn't thought that she asking me like you know hold my history like you know how long. You yeah, well, the, 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 hopefully the DS five five three five will clear it up. I'm gonna let you go, AJ. Okay, buddy. All right. Thanks, Jim. See you, man. All right. All right. Let's go to. I have a question. Hello. Hey, Jim. <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I was on your show a while back on Manchester, if you remember me. Okay. <laughs> um, so I recently, um, I have two questions, actually. Also, I want to thank you. I, I recently just got my green card. I'm awesome. two years approved in February. Great. And um, me and my wife, we plan on moving um, to our new house in August. So for that, is there anything I need to um, worry about for the i seven five one? Any information to put on there? What do you mean, any information? Like um, like in the address history and everything, I know I'll put like the new address in there and and whatever. So do I put like um, evidence of like the um, of like the old address and everything like that, and the new address, like the electricity being from the old address and the new address, or should I put for the new address? Well, to me, it's not so much new address or old address. To me, it's is it evidence from after I got my two year green card or before? That's the whole thing. So if you if we're, if you have if you get your green card and mm -hmm. your two year green card and you're living with your spouse at address A and you have good evidence of that and then you move to address B, you yeah, have good evidence of that. If it's all after you got your two year green card, submit all of it. Okay, okay, okay. Sounds good. I'll do that. Um, my second question. Um, so I have an uncle. Um, he's currently in the USA. Um, so it's kind of a, let me give you a whole rundown. So he, he went, he traveled to Ukraine. Um, I think this was like 2007 or so. Then while he was there, he applied for American visa lottery and he won. Then from there, he, um, he had a wife in Ukraine. Then they both moved to the USA um, so when he moved to the USA, you know, he got his citizenship and naturalized and is still married with his wife. But then he has two kids in Nigeria where um, he has two kids over there and he has basically has it for his baby mama. He's not married to the lady in Nigeria. So now he's trying to, like, bring them to the USA. He hasn't seen them for over 13 years, but then he sends money to them and keep in contact and, you know, stay in their did life. Them on, did he list them on every single immigration application he ever filed in the United States? Yes, he listed, he listed them on his N-400 application. He listed them on his, um, um, you know, the DS-260 when okay. it was coming. So he listed okay, so them on all the applications. What's the question? So is he able to um, bring them into the United States without any issues? Well, without any issues is a whole different thing. Um how old are they? So um, one of them is 17. Um, he'll, he'll be turning um, 18 this December. Okay. Yeah. He can apply for them. Okay. So he can apply for them and it should be all good. I hope so. Okay. Um, so he told me um, that during the interview for his N-400, uh, he, the officer, this, his, actually his current wife doesn't know he has kids over there, but then he didn't get his green card through or anything. So I guess he, so I guess he, he kind of lied to the immigration officer and said he was like, there's like his cousin, kids or something, because he doesn't want his wife to know. And I'm like, you, you, why, why don't you like not let your wife know something like that? But he, um, I guess he just made something up at the interview. So <laughs> what do you have to say about that? I say he's a dumb fuck. Did he, did he apply on the three-year rule or the five-year rule? Um, no, so he, he didn't get his, his, his green card through. He got it through. Um, doesn't matter. Did he apply on the three-year rule or the five-year? It doesn't matter how he got it. It matters. If you've had your green card, you got it through employment. If you have it for three years and you're married to a U.S. citizen, you can apply on the three-year rule. No, so he got it through green card lottery. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. But now he's married to a U.S. citizen? No, she. I don't think she's a U.S. citizen. She was like Ukrainian or something. 
So he brought her over here. Like I think I guess he added her to the form. Yeah. Listen, if your uncle wants to call me and I can get more details from him and I can yell at him, I'll be happy to. Otherwise, I'm just gonna move on. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get going. Okay, sounds good. It's too hypothetical. Yeah. So Thanks. All right, I'm gonna take one more call because he's been waiting almost the whole time. Fatty, hello, Fatty. How you doing? I'm well. How about you? Thank you I'm for. Good. Yep. Uh, I have one question, and uh, it's just basically, um, what's easier and faster to bring a wife? Is it easier and faster to bring a wife as a wife or as a fiance? So that's a great question, Fadi. I'm glad we're ending with you. What country are we talking about? Syria. So, um, it has been at least five years since anyone could say that fiance cases are faster. Fiance cases are not faster. And they haven't been faster for three, four, five years. So I believe that the State Department can cause more trouble on fiancé cases. So just, just for you to know, if you get an approved I-129F and it gets sent to an embassy, it has an expiration date of four months. The State Department regularly extends that so that people can get their visas, but they don't have to. They don't have to. So every now and then, maybe two cases out of 100, they pick some and they say, oh, we're just going to let this one expire. And then you've got to go ahead and get married and start over. So since they started pulling that crap, I've been telling everybody to do the marriage route. All right. And how long do you think that would take? What embassy do you think they'll process through? Because we don't have one in Syria. Beirut. So you're looking at two and a half years start to finish. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's not fast. Is there like any other embassies that could be faster? No. No. No, they're going to take their time with Syria. They're going to feel like they can't do a full background check. That'll be one of the slowest cases there are. Oof, that's not good news. It's not good news, but you know what I say, um, and it's easy for me to say because I live here with my wife, but what I say is the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The second best time is today. So really all you can do is get started. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye, Fatty. See you, buddy. Good question. All right, all right. That'll do it for today's show. We went over a little bit. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Huli, what time? 1 p.m. Central. 1 p.m. Central. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hope you all have a great night. I'll be back. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thanks for all the great comments. And we'll see you guys manana.